Here's a Norway spruce, Picea abies, and I think it's being affected by a Phytophthora, and actually a Rhizosphera needlecast. And you can see how the inside older growth is dying back, and only the newer buds are still green here. And um, I'm almost 100% sure it's Rhizosphera needlecast. The interesting thing about it is that Norway spruce is supposed to be one of the most resistant species. But these do get sprayed with a sprinkler, and they are kind of in full sun, so maybe the heat combined with the moisture adds stress to it. And let me see if I can show you up close one of the um, needles so you can see the fruiting bodies of this. Get in really close here. Okay, if you look really closely, you can see the, especially right here. See the little black dots on the needles? You can really see it. Try again. It's very small. If I had a magnifying glass, it would be a lot more obvious. But even without that, to me, it's pretty obvious. I can see the black dots. See that? That's the fruiting body of the Rhizosphere needle cast fungus. What I'm doing now is I'm trimming out all of the branches on the bottom that have been mostly affected. And that won't necessarily save the tree, but it, it may slow the spread, especially to other trees. I have another Norway spruce right next to it. I think maybe it's already infected too, because I'm starting to see that browning on the inside. So there may be no way to save these. The interesting thing is right next to that, I have the oriental spruce, Picea orientalis. And these are supposed to be pretty resistant as well, so they'll get the chance to prove their resistance if they're right next to a tree that is either badly infected or dies from Rhizosphere needle cast. And this is really kind of the whole point of my spruce experiment in Tennessee, is just to try a bunch of different spruce species and see which ones can withstand heat, humidity, a sprinkler, whatever it is, local fungus. This is the test. And Norway spruce, which is what this is, it looks great up top. It's supposed to be one of the most resilient, but even this one is having major problems. And that same fungus, Rhizosphera, is the reason I don't plant Colorado blue spruce, because those would probably die almost within immediately, first year probably. So Norway is most resistant, and even this one has problems, which just goes to show you how heavy the fungal density is in this place. I mean, it really is a, uh, a high fungus area. We've got the Fumopsis tip lights, we've got, probably got Cabotina, we've got Rhesusfera needle cast. Tennessee is just very much a, a hard place for conifers to survive. So uh, I'll keep you up to date on this one, but oh yeah, let's take a look at these branches here. He's already chopped off. You can see more clearly the pattern here, how the inside has died out, the needles turned brown, fell off, and the only thing left is really last year's growth and this year's new growth. But even these will eventually turn brown and fall off and it'll get down to this, where it's just not much left. So, um, yeah, there it is. Rhizosphera needle cast on a Norway spruce, which is surprising.